Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos, I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine. And of course, I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, culture, background or whatever interests you. And today I have decided to speak a little bit about Soviet Union, USSR or Sovok as it is often called in many post-Soviet countries. And I have a separate vlog about this idea or concept of post-Soviet countries and that we actually don't like being called that way, but at the same call ourselves that way. But um, there is a question. Do I remember Soviet Union? Have I been born during that period? I'm really glad that most of you think that I'm in my mid-20s when I guess I'm in my mid-30s. But I'm totally comfortable in my age and hopefully you won't unsubscribe uh, from my channel. But those of you who logically know that I'm a PhD, that, well, there are lots of things that I already know, must have thought that, like, I'm not 21. But it's really good that you think that way. And, uh, well, I have not experienced Soviet Union. When I went to school, it was already independent Ukraine and all the things and subjects that I have learned were taught totally different than it was. So it was just the early, early childhood that I can remember uh, hearing on the news about the fall of the Soviet Union. And I cannot tell you that like I'm 100% sure that um, this is not my uh, mind that substitutes these memories. But um, the problem is that even if you were born years or decades after the Soviet Union, there are lots of things that are left in mentality, in architecture, in culture, in television, in education, everywhere, because Soviet Union occupied Ukraine. And I would like to stress occupied Ukraine. It was not our choice. Of course, there were many Ukrainians among the communists, but in general, the country and population were occupied. The culture and identity were destroyed. So uh, these occupation lasted more than 70 years. And that is a really long period. And it was not just like simple, I don't know, assimilation. These were really thought well and dangerously, well-planned, very serious processes, very poisonous processes that wanted to erase cultural, linguistic identities of the countries that were occupied by Soviet Union, like Ukraine, like Baltic countries, like other countries that were not directly a part of the Soviet Union, but still were very much under the influence of it. So uh, what we call Sovok is this negative description because uh, uh, Soviet Union was a very gloomy and dark period. And one of the reasons why Putin started this war is because he personally considers the fall of the Soviet Union one of the greatest geopolitical catastrophes. And he believes that uh, his mission is to um, revive the idea of an ugly mixture of Russian Empire, Soviet Union and something new. And of course, the majority of countries that were part of the Soviet Union believed it was a very happy moment when it fell. But honestly, here inside Ukraine and other countries, we realized that for majority of us, this independence came for free. This was not a rebellion. This was not a revolution that we fought for. Of course, lots of people lost their lives fighting against Soviet Union. But the final fall of Soviet Union was not the result of a revolution. It was the collapse of the system that was incapable of living uh, according to communism that was supposed to arrive in the 80s or something, but didn't. And the problem is that many countries, starting from the Baltic, that had really bloody independence in the 90s. And today, Ukraine, many people believe this is our true fault for independence. That in 1991, it was just the um, fall of the Soviet Union. And what we have now is our real true war for independence. And of course, we will win it because this is the war for our identity, this is the war for our existence, and this is also the example for many other, and I hate this term, but I will use it, post-Soviet countries. 
and um, also um, there are lots of cultural elements, there are lots of uh, historical, philosophical elements of Soviet Union that are not yet discussed, that are not yet explained, that are not yet decommunized. And I am personally a great fan of the decommunization process. And it is not only about renaming the streets or the cities that were named by some communist leaders who were among the organizers of Ukrainian genocide, Holodomor, for example, which is totally stupid. But it is a very difficult process of the understanding how different the country Ukraine would be but for the Soviet occupation. By the way, at the beginning of the 20th century, the population of Ukraine was close to 80 million people. 80 million people. And today we have less than 40 million people. I do know negative, uh, how do you call it, like birth rates, other problems everywhere in Europe, in Russia, but like half of the population approximately, definitely it is not just a simple process. It is the result of a totalitarian Soviet regime. And honestly, when I think about various projects that I can develop and I would like to speak about, sometimes I think that there are lots of Soviet myths that could be debunked because people all over the world still believe them. And most importantly, Russia copies and uses them. So to some extent, we may say that Russia is an heir. You've taught me how to pronounce and I hope I do it right. Russia simply continues the traditions of the Soviet Union. Somehow we close our eyes when Russia stays in the United Nations because it is the descendant of uh, the Soviet Union. And then we try to see Russia as a different culture, not a Soviet Union, not a Sovok, in another perspective. No, if we consider it a continuation of Soviet Union in the United Nations, that it is also a continuation in culture and everywhere. And it is so. They still continue repeating lots of myths, like one people neglecting various cultural differences and linguistic differences. They still treat West as dangerous and rotten. They still have one leader, one party. Uh, they still don't like, like rich people and they don't respect private property and many other things. So I'm thinking on all of these ideas and uh, I would like to read in comments, what do you think about that? Because when we um, analyze, when you get interested in various cultures and aspects like um, sometimes it's interesting to watch things about like, I don't know, um, Nazi Germany because they were so weird in everything that they did and it's important to understand the mechanisms of their mistakes. When did it go wrong? What could be done to prevent that? Also, I like watching documentaries about the North Korea and so on. And then when I look about the information of the Soviet Union, knowing that so many people died as victims of this regime, it is still depicted as something more or less neutral. And lots of myths that were created back in Soviet times are now used by Russian propaganda and accepted by lots of viewers, listeners and readers, even in the civilized democratic countries. So let me know, are there any things that you would like to know about Soviet Union? Once again, I did not live in that period. I was not a pioneer. I like, but my parents were, my grandparents were, and there are lots of things even in the streets of my city that were left from that period and that still poison minds, consciousness, and maybe some decisions of uh, people. And the closer to Moscow you move, the stronger the feeling of that communism is uh, felt and all the problems that it gave birth to, starting from corruption, finishing from finishing with like I don't know disrespect to elections, to your own voice, to independence, freedom, and other things. So let me know if that is an interesting topic or maybe this is something that is long ago uh, forgotten and not important. Once again, thank you for being with me. And if you like my videos, please comment, uh, share, and of course, subscribe to my channel. I am looking forward to 7,000 subscribers. I know that is not much, that is not many, but I value everyone. And I'm really proud of the community we have in this channel. 
and it's very important for uh, Ukrainians to be visible and to be heard in YouTube and everywhere. So if you feel like you want to support me, do subscribe to the channel. And once again, thank you for being with me. Thank you for uh, speaking, thinking about Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!